first I'll open the floor to public comment. Or I assume nobody is here other than for the one application. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay, seeing nobody, we'll move on for public comment. Um, and the application before us is a request for a commercial finding by NETA for a buffer change, 118 Con Street, Northampton, Mass. Map ID 39A-20. Um, we'll hear from the applicant or the representative of the applicant, and then the board members will have an opportunity to ask questions, and then anyone else who would like to speak to address this application or ask questions will have the opportunity. I ask that anyone address their questions to the board, not to each other, um, although it doesn't look like it'll be an issue tonight. And, um, um, and then that way the board can then address questions to the applicant or, or representative of the applicant. Um, so we'll go ahead and hear the application for the commercial finding. And, and if everyone who speaks could give Car for the record and Carolyn a uh, name and address, please. Yes. Um, okay, thanks. I'm not sure you have to use that, do you? Really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. I, okay. Yes, please, if you, if you could okay. somehow be better if we not utilize not the mic. Oh. <laughs> um, my name is Leslie Laurie. I'm the regional director for NETA, and I live at 118. Um, Packardville Road in Pelham, but this is in regard to 118 Con Street in Northampton. And I'm delighted that a local, wonderful uh, construction company is the one that's doing the work for us, Construct. So Bob is the one who's going to address the issues. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'm a little taller. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm Bob Walker from Construct Associates. Um, my residential address is 13 Fort Street. Our business address is 36 Service Center down Con Street. Um, we're applying for this finding. What we want to do is to build a small egress vestibule on the rear exit. Uh, because of the traffic, the foot traffic going through the store, the owners thought it would be best to end the necessary proofing of the people going into the building. They're trying to direct the traffic through the front door where people will be checked and proofed and out the rear vestibule Got it. just to make it a more secure situation. Yep. Uh, there's always an egress door there already, but they want to put a small vestibule just for weather protection and basically having, it'll have double doors which will prevent people from walking into the rear of the building without proofing. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, it's a small 8 by 10 foot, basically shed structure out of the picture if you'd like to see. I'm talking with Carolyn about the zoning issues. There's a zero lot line requirement there, so the structure itself does not infringe on the zoning. But to my understanding, it's what's called a buffer infringement. Is that true, Carolyn? Right, but since this district, general business district, abuts a residential district around the perimeter of all those districts, right. there's uh, typically a 30 foot uh, buffer required, just uh, landscaping or other kind of separation between commercial and residential. Great. Use. Great. Right. There's a, uh, about a four foot white vinyl fence now uh, on the property line to separate it from uh, the residence next door. Actually, the abutting lot is just an open lot. One house over, the neighbor bought that lot. There was, it was a burn down there, and she purchased that property. Um, the building owners put up this four-foot fence as a part of this buffer infringement. We'd be happy to put up a larger fence to just protect the buffer, you know, and not allow people to see back there and create a little more privacy. And so it's a pre-existing non-conforming buffer. And were the conditions placed on that? It just has it always been that way. It predates, that yeah, that's yeah, yeah. pre-existing. It predates the ordinance because there just was never a vegetative buffer. Oh, no, that's not. Right. Yeah. Yeah, could I? Uh, yeah, so looking at this one, uh, I see this lot now, or formula of Theroux, and so this one is vacant? That's the vacant lot. So right. this other... Yeah, that's a house on it. This is a vacant lot. Yep. Right now, there's a very large, like Harbor BD, very large buffer area here, mm -hmm. very tall bushes. There's a, this is a new fence that was installed from here 
around. It says new eight foot. So that's well, not where we're proposing. Well, oh, that's the fourth. That's floor. where we're going for. As a to you know, just to complete the mm -hmm. So it's currently a four foot vinyl, and you'd be uh, that perhaps they put up or. Do you know, know that? Do you, we have to be responsible. Yeah, you will do the Did they do the original the fence? Day. What? Did your company do the original fence? Okay. Ah, okay. So there's. Uh, so this is vacant. Yeah. I, I'd like to ask yeah. about that because I, I did do a drive by and it looks like this is more like a double lot with a house on this part of it because there's children's play structures right like there. No, no, the house is here. This is a completely vacant lot. This was another house that burned down and this woman purchased this lot. So there's no structure on this lot. You see play structures I on the vinyl? I see play four, structures four within, vinyl? very close within the vinyl. Yeah, very close up to oh. that. Uh, and I thought the building, this is wide open, but it looked to me like the lot had been two lots and that there's a structure on one of the two lots, but well, you're saying. I think you're both right from what I just heard because mm -hmm. if it's now two lots of common, common ownership under the merger doctrine, at least for zoning purposes, it's one lot, but it, it was earlier in the chain of title owned by two different people. So she has the house there, she owns that, which gives her the right to put a play structure there. But, but uh, she, it she has be behind the bushes. I'm, I've yeah. been noticed yeah. because I don't Yeah, yeah. now yeah. when you go, you'll take, you'll be able yeah. to see right. because it goes yeah. about four or five feet above the fence. It's mm -hmm. just extensive. But place it, once the fence yeah. is eight foot tall. You see, the, the end of the day, like, it's quite you know, there's only really like long. very tall bushes right yeah. along this path yeah. here. So, like, from here, you can't even kind of see back there. Have, have, Karen, have uh, we received anything from neighbors? So no comments. Have you had conversations? I have. With I have with yeah, Isabel, who is oh, our neighbor. Yes. Should I address you sure, formally? Please. Thank you. Yeah. Um, um, we've had a really good relationship with Isabel, who is our next door neighbor, and she was aware that we were coming tonight. You know, of course, she got the butter information too, and we told her that what we were going to do was to, I mean, if this is what you agreed to, to, you know, increase the size, the size of the fence, and she was fine. And obviously she's not here objecting and she didn't notify Carolyn's office about any objections. And she's the immediate abutter. Cool. And no other correspondence from any. And what about DPW? They, they wouldn't care about the fence, right? So, okay. So, uh, so the, the buffer between uh, commercial use and the residential use, uh, do, does, would an eight foot fence normally provide that or was there some vegetation kind of provision in there? So the way the um, ordinance is written in section 6.5 um, says that the planning board can reduce that 30 foot dimension um, down to 20 feet if a fence or other site impervious structure um, were placed and potentially a combination of vegetation and, and fence. So a fence is often used as an alternative or in addition to, and it really kind of depends on the spacing and whether or not vegetation would survive in a location like that. So um, it's not, uh, it's definitely not uncommon that a fence would um, be used as an alternative means of sort of creating that, maintaining that privacy. And uh, lastly, the um, I understand that a six foot fence doesn't even need a permit but an eight foot fence does, does this, does this zoning permit address the size of the fence or just, or just simply as a condition of? So the, so in the zoning, uh, an eight foot fence is allowed where it separates residential from commercial. It's only mm -hmm. residential to residential that you can have a six and a half foot fence maximum. I see. Got it. So um, eight would be allowed by right under the zoning for commercial uh, residential uh, separation. So we're not actually particularly concerned about that, except it's a good thing to do for the neighbor. Correct. All right. So, so what we're uh, looking at is that the structure is being built close to the property line, um, and now you're going to have more foot traffic back there. Well, so that's about it. That's that's the point. Is yes. that. We, there will be foot traffic there. We are actually installing a new sidewalk. 
mm -hmm. accessible sidewalk without a step so people can get in and out. Um, mm -hmm. and like I said, the, the existing buffer is very large bushes and we just, mm -hmm. on Carol's suggestion, she said mm -hmm. an eight-foot fence would be acceptable. Take care of it. Um, okay, can you talk about the lighting? I see that you are mounting an exterior light. Where and what kind of light? Well, they're definitely going to be LED lights, but they'll be shrouded so you don't get. Um, okay, so they'll aim down. down. Yeah. And yeah, how yeah. do you have any idea the um, hours you'll have them on? Well, the uh, I believe the hours until ten at night, right? It's yeah. So from dusk till, till ten. ten. Excuse me. Exactly. They're only allowed to be on for yeah. half. But the nature of the light is not going to aim into the residential. No. Oh no, no, no. Great. I'm not I seeing a light fixture on the proposed vestibule. No, it hasn't been determined yet, but if you'd like us to resubmit that, that would be fine. It's right here. What's that? Exterior lighting, C or CP, but okay. I don't know what that keys yeah. to. So it's actually not going to aim directly at the properties, mm -hmm. the other properties, it's kind of sideways. pointing this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What does our yeah, CP I'm sure that mean? I, I mean? honestly. Uh, I'm sure we're going to be lighting the path as well. Some mm -hmm. right down lights on the building. Down lights. These are just some propane tanks here sitting at the walls. Just keep it out of the way. Yeah. But any lighting would have to comply with the ordinance to the extent it relates to restrictions. Right. Yeah. 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 Apply for a permit for the fence, or it is allowed by right, or we can just change it. No, the fence is allowed by right, but particularly if if it's part of this application, then it would become part of your permit. So the board could vote on or make a determination that because you're proposing a fence, then you know it sort of mitigates the um, mm -hmm. reduction of that buffer. So they can talk about that. But if that's the case, then that's part of your permit requirement. Any other questions from board members? Mm -hmm. I don't see any members of the public here for this application. Um, if we don't think we need any more information or there are no more comments that you want to present, I, we can, yeah. I just want to make one comment is that since working for NETA, I've just been really impressed with how <coughs> much they care about the community. They've been doing a lot of landscaping down there and having the building repointed and painted and trying to make a very nice appearance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I guess motion to close the public here. So moved. Second. Seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. And a motion on the request for the commercial finding. Uh, is that right? Uh, sure. All moves that we approve the request for. Um, we probably. What's our best reference? Uh, right here. This is. This is what I usually use. Mm -hmm. Ah, thank you. On the commercial finding for NETA, the buffer change um, with the might add the condition for the eight-foot fence in this. Sure. Yeah. With, with the, or, or as presented, right? Because it's in the application. As presented, so either to way. include an eight-foot fence yeah, in perfect. place of where the four-foot fence is now, um, but otherwise as presented. Second on the motion. Second. And any discussion? So, all in favor? It's unanimous. You're all set. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. You. Thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have minutes. Okay. And also, it's on our schedule. You want to do the minutes first? Mm -hmm. We have minutes from January 11th to February 22nd. We'll just need a motion to approve. All right, I'm going to ship them overnight if you have to. Which is on January 11th. There's a space in the word footage. Uh, the line. Um, so comments on the minutes? Okay, so motion to approve the minutes for January 11th and February 22nd. So moved. And second. Second. Okay, all in favor, unanimous. And then summer schedule here. Yeah, so July and August we usually pick one instead of both days to meet. Oh yeah. Um, so 
So I don't know what works best for most people. Um, we could start with vacations. Yeah. Um, so if it was July, we'd be looking at the 12th through the 26th? Uh, that's so correct. The yeah, 12th through 26th. Through 26th. On the way to the 26th. Okay. About the, do you know, Bob, what you're scheduling? I don't know, but I, I'm a two hour drive from whatever one, so I can do that. So, should we nice. shoot for the 12th? You're living then? on the Cape for the summer? I'm living on the Cape. Oh, nice. Oh, oh, nice. Uh, New Hampshire. Well, there's a good commute. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to look at August 2 to see which week is better? Cause yeah, well, first, I think that means July, the date would be July 12th, right? Yes. And then we'll look at August, because I am on vacation for a week in August. So July 12th at 5.30, tentatively. Nothing on the 26th. And then August, it would be the 9th or the 23rd. And I am away the week of the 20th. So for, so what, okay, how does the 9th look for people? Looks good. It's okay. For so should we shoot for the 9th? Yeah, so that kind of makes sense. So if we shoot yes. for the 12th and the 9th. Yes. Well, it's going to say plan ahead. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yes. Oops. 9th of 5th. Yeah. Yeah. So that's July 12th. July 12th and August 9th. Okay. And I don't know if we have anything, but <laughs> I'll keep you posted. Yeah, boy, it sure, yeah. we just sure is. Adjourn, right? Yeah. So moved. Second. Yeah. All in favor? 